pixel number. VF is approximately zero. It is not ever zero, but it is close enough to count for physics. This is an advantage we have over the math classes, where the math classes then have to deal with the, the limit is zero, and we can just say it's close enough. There's one other term that's going to become zero. By process of elimination, you might know which one it is. It's not y. Do it this way. Uh, so vi, what, that's what we're trying to find, what that speed is. Um, what is r sub i? It's going to continue to get smaller as it goes, goes out, correct? Ooh. What is r? Radius. Radius. Of? The center of x to the edge. Mass of x, yeah. So R in general is center to center distance. It, R sub I is specifically the, this radius right here. It's going to stay uh, So R does not get smaller and smaller. Right. Right. R gets bigger and bigger. So this R sub I is going to be radius of planet. Gotcha. This R sub F here gets huge. I got a fraction here. G is a constant. Mass of the planet is a constant. Mass of the stuff is constant. So I have some constant divided by a it's huge continuing number. Continuing to get smaller. And so therefore, yeah. that's close enough to zero because my denominator gets infinitely large. Yeah. Close enough so the term becomes close enough to zero. So what I'm left with is one half, and again, one half times the mass of the satellite or stuff times its initial speed squared minus big G mass of the planet over mass of the stuff divided by radius of the planet equals zero. I have mass of the satellite is a common factor and so it can go away. And so if I solve for vi, vi is equal to the square root of 2, big G, mass of the planet, over r. If we plug into, let's assume we're dealing with Earth, this becomes the square root of 2 times the 6.5. 6, 7 times 10 to the negative 11, that's big G. Mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24, divided by the radius of the Earth, which is about 64, uh, 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters. <clears throat> So this is about 6,400 kilometers. And if you crank that into the calculator, what do you get?
Yeah. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what, what happened there. Alright, so you did two times two point six seven and then eleven times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, so you multiply all that out. And you're doing a split with the same time? Uh, yeah. Oh, the 6.64 times 10 to the 6 is also under the radical. You, uh, you did the radical and then divided by that. So if you divide it by, so once you have that answer, if you divide it by. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. So it's 11164. Point what? Four eight. Four eight. No doubt. All the way again. Uh, units? You said that's uh, meters per second? That's 11,164.48 meters per second. That is the escape speed for the Earth. Uh, potentially, you could call it escape velocity because it has, does have to be going away from the planet. This assumes that it's not running into anything. No air molecules, no mountains, no birds, no planes, no planets. If I launch something at that speed, it should leave Earth and never return. Because of time, I'm just going to give a slight teaser into what we'll start out on Thursday with. So, V I squared is equal to two big G M X over R. It's basically that equation before you take the square root. If instead of this is the escape speed, but if there were an actual maximum speed, there it is. If there is a maximum speed, we could then calculate either what is the mass of the planet need to be in order to keep it from escaping or what is the radius, which is more likely. So if we then just sort of solve for r, r is equal to 2gmx over c squared, and that v became a c because this is the symbol used for the maximum speed, which is the speed of light. We can now solve for the radius of the planet. In other words, how big does the Earth need to be? How much do we have to shrink it down, assuming it loses no mass? We somehow compress it into some tiny little ball how big does that need to be in order for the Earth to become a black hole? We can do the same for the sun. How big does the sun need to be? If we took all of its current mass and suddenly shrank it down, how big does it need to be to create a black hole? For those who get concerned about such things, uh, according to current theories, our sun is not massive enough to become a black hole, but we'll talk about that on Thursday. And whether the Earth could actually be compressed down into how big it needs to be to become a black hole, I think it's actually physically impossible. If you compress it that tightly, it probably would, I suspect it would create a huge atomic explosion as you sort of fuse the atoms together and it would. Uh, well, at that point, mankind's not on the earth anymore. <laughs> But we'll talk about the future of the, the solar system and how my wife sided with Neil deGrasse Tyson instead of me over one matter. But I'll go on the record and say Neil deGrasse Tyson just spoke and my wife is wrong. <laughs> and you're filming it too. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you play it for her. Oh, yeah. <laughs>